For more, let's go to Minneapolis in the United States. Academic Adrian Zenz is the author of Tibetanness Under Threat. Thank you for speaking with us on France 24. Uh, concretely, thank you. What what evidence do we have as to uh, how big uh, these uh, re-education centers or whatever the vocational tr uh, uh, what is it they called it exactly? Hold on, I, I said it a minute ago. Um, uh, vocational training centers. Uh, how 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 big is the scale? Uh, the scale is not easy to assess because obviously China does not officially publish a lot of data uh, on the scale or on the number of persons detained. However, we do have extensive documentation, especially from previous years, that were released by local county authorities and prefecture authorities, uh, particularly between 2014 and 16. These documents uh, speak quite extensively about the structure and the, uh, in the increasing institutionalization of an extensive uh, re-education network. And um, in about 2017, this initiative was merged with a drive to provide vocational training. And in about March 2017, there's um, eyewitness evidence of uh, thousands of people disappearing, being gathered up. We then have uh, an increase in uh, government uh, procurement and construction bids that indicate that these camps have been uh, constructed or existing facilities such as schools have been converted into re-education facilities on multiple administrative levels. Uh, 22 million uh, people live in Xinjiang province, half of them Uyghur Muslims. Uh, do we have any idea since uh, this all began uh, what the effects uh, of this policy by Beijing have been? Um, there's anecdotal and eyewitness evidence uh, of the impact. We do know um, also from uh, visitors that uh, the re-education drive uh, is uh, instilling a great amount of fear into the population. There's a real atmosphere of fear uh, very much, of course, inside these camps, and former instructors have spoken out uh, on that uh, matter, but also in the general Xinjiang society. Now, some evidence from those who have been inside the camps and were able not only to uh, be released or to escape, but also to leave China, were able to speak out more freely on their personal experiences. These persons have reported in some instances uh, that they are suffering uh, from memory loss. Memory loss is a classic uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. This is very much what we can expect from uh, intensified indoctrination where the conditions of when a person can be released or the time when they can be released is unknown, which is one of the worst things that can happen to normal people who are suddenly swept up and detained. We can expect that this campaign is causing a lot of trauma and a lot of broken identities among the Muslim minority populations. And within that Muslim minority populations, there is there are radicals. Adrian Zenz, uh, um, our journalists have, have seen Uyghurs fighting in Syria in some instances, uh, although they, they may be small in numbers. What kind of a boomerang effect can we expect? Now, uh, China does have, uh, to an extent, a legitimate terror threat, as you have mentioned, although organized resistance has basically been uh, squashed and destroyed. Now, uh, some Uyghurs uh, outside of China, uh, as you have mentioned, have radicalized themselves, and uh, there have been threats uh, to return to China and to um, launch some kind of war uh, against Chinese authorities in order to what they call uh, freeing their home country. Um, in actual reality, the actual threat emanating uh, from these groups is probably fairly small. China has uh, invested very heavily in securing this region, in securing its borders. It is using high-tech tools, high-tech surveillance. It is installing extensive border controls, fences, and multiple layers of security. In contrast, these fighters 
who have radicalized themselves and have now some fighting experience are actually fairly limited in number and their level of organization is likely not particularly high. So really no match for the uh, well-armed and well-organized uh, Chinese uh, security authorities. Adrian Zenz, when you uh, compare uh, the treatment of Uyghur Muslims with uh, Tibetan Buddhists or Christian minorities elsewhere. The authorities in Beijing, do they have the same attitude towards religious minorities, whoever they may be? In ultimate essence, the answer must be yes. Any religion is suspect to a communist um, or quasi-socialist regime. Um, these ideologies, religious ideologies, have long been considered a threat and a competition to um, a, a party that is officially atheist. And to the great um, surprise or perplexity of the Chinese state, the communist uh, prophecy that um, religions will eventually fade or subside with material progress and economic growth has not materialized. Quite to the contrary, uh, religions across China, be it Buddhism, Christianity, and also Islam, have uh, witnessed a strong res res resurgence uh, after the reform and opening up under Deng Xiaoping. We now see a, a very strong increase in the repression of religions, be it Christian house churches, be it Tibetan Buddhist monasteries, uh, be it Islamic um, mosques and locations. However, um, what we see in Xinjiang uh, specifically is unprecedented in terms of oppression and crackdown. And that is simply because uh, Uyghur Muslim uh, groups have been able to launch violent attacks outside of Xinjiang and carried the struggle for, um, uh, against oppression and for um, an independent country to an extent uh, outside their own region. Now, Tibetans have self-immolated, uh, meaning they have burned themselves. Uh, which, uh, to a large extent, has not affected other Han. Uyghurs have carried out violent attacks against Chinese police stations and against Chinese citizens, uh, which has forced the government into action uh, on a different scale. Adrian Zenz, the author of Tibet uh, Tibetanness Under Threat, many thanks for joining us from uh, Minneapolis in Minnesota.